Today we're going to be studying buffers. Remember that a buffer resists a change in pH. Much like a girl resists the advances of a persistent boy. Remember from last semester, bases are very high in pH, while acids are very low in pH. If you mix a strong acid and a strong base, they will come together at a pH of 7, which is the pH of water. So why does that happen? Well, remember, acids have extra hydrogen ions, and bases typically have extra OH ions. So when these two come together, they form H2O, or water. So a buffer is going to resist change, which means that if we add the same quantity of base, it's going to change much less in terms of pH than it would in an unbuffered solution. In the first part of the lab, we're going to add acid and base to an unbuffered solution of pure water. So we expect dramatic changes in the pH with just a small addition of acid or base. In the second part, we're going to add a small amount of acid and base to the buffered solution. Now what do we expect to happen is we expect a much smaller change in the pH level, which is the y-axis, from the addition of a small amount of acid or base. Remember that just because it's a base doesn't mean it's not extremely dangerous. So try not to spill it on yourself or drink any of the substance. For this lab, we're going to be using a pH probe. But before we use it to measure pH, we're going to need to calibrate it using these buffer solutions. OK, so we're going to be using our pH probe with our LabQuest. Notice that this time it doesn't have a USB connection. So now we're going to have to plug it into one of these three ports on the side. Once you plug it in, it will begin reading pH. In order to calibrate our sensor, we're going to have to touch the screen and then select Calibrate. Calibrate Now button, which will take us to this screen. We can now take our probe and rinse it in distilled water and dry it off with a Kim wipe. Make sure to not smear the probe as you might build a small electric charge on it. Just dab it dry. Once it's dry, we can go ahead and insert it into our buffer solution. Notice that here we have a buffer solution of 7. So we will type in the number 7 on the LabQuest and press keep. Now it'll ask us for a second known value. So we will once again rinse the pH probe, dab it dry, and insert it to a new buffer solution. This one has a pH of 4. So we will then go ahead and press 4 and press keep. Our pH probe should now be calibrated and should have a fairly accurate reading of our buffer solution. So now we're going to take our 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid and add a couple drops of it to our solution. Now what do we expect to happen according to our graph? Now I don't want to give away all the secrets of this lab, so you will have to take some measurements. What would you expect for your unbuffered pH curve when you add a small amount of acid? What about for your buffered pH curve when you add a small amount of acid? So now, what exactly is a buffer? Well, remember that an acid releases a lot of extra hydrogen ions. So there's all these hydrogen ions floating around. Now what a buffer does is it can actually absorb some of those hydrogen ions, like grab onto them, and therefore making the solution slightly less acidic. So when we add a strong acid, all these extra hydrogen ions are released. With the buffer in play, some of those extra hydrogen ions are absorbed and they become, they come to an equilibrium between this stage and this stage. That equilibrium will be calculated from your Ka values. And that's all for today's lab, folks. Just remember, buffers resist change. And now, le joke. So two atoms are walking down the road, 
And the first one says, Oh no, I've lost an electron! The other says, Are you sure? The first one replies, Yes, I'm positive! <laughs>